Now at five and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, Victoria officials investigate a fire at a storage unit on Highway 87. Plus, a Texas voter is charged with assault after attacking a San Antonio poll worker. And the Texas drought is intensifying fast. How much of the state is feeling the heat? We'll have a look at how serious it's gotten. Well, the good news is that the rains have returned to the crossroads. As you can see, we're getting light little showers uh, rolling ashore. Even as we speak, there's more on the horizon. There is even some for Halloween. Not serious stuff, but something. We'll be talking about that coming up in a moment. Plus, a wrong way crash on a Texas highway leaves five dead, sparking fresh calls for driver awareness. You're watching 25 News Now at 5. Good afternoon and thanks for being with us. I'm Shauna Curry. Victoria fire officials are investigating the cause of a boat fire. This happened at a storage facility on Highway 87 at Kingwood Forest Drive. A motorist driving on Highway 87 reported smoke coming from the storage facility. Victoria Fire Captain Andrew Goss says even though there was a lot of smoke, the fire was contained inside a small area. Uh, when we arrived, uh, there's heavy smoke. Uh, got all the doors popped, turned out to be a fire in just one of the units. Uh, it was a, a boat that was on fire. We got it pulled out of the unit, put out, and uh, everything's good now. No injuries. Uh, no the cause of the fire is being investigated. A woman is ticketed after a two vehicle crash at Navarro and Salem Road. Police say the driver of the white SUV had a green light and was turning left onto Navarro when the driver of the silver sedan ran a red light causing the crash. One person was taken to the hospital for minor injuries. Well, the dry, warm stretch in Texas is really starting to hit hard. As of October 22nd, about two thirds of the state is officially in drought, with nearly a quarter more facing unusually dry conditions that could soon turn into drought if we don't get some rain soon. For the past month, the drought has been expanding week after week. Since late September, the drought affected area has actually doubled, marking the largest impact that we've seen since October of last year. Here in the crossroads, all counties are also feeling the strain, seeing two classes of worsening drought conditions over just the past month. Central and East Texas have been hit especially hard as well, with many areas slipping at least two levels deeper into drought. But the good news is we do have a little bit of rain in the forecast. Let's check in now with First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mac Perez. Mac. Thank you very much. Well, it's not going to end the drought, but we'll get some nice rain over the next couple of days. Obviously, today we started picking up the little cloud cover and a little shower activity rolling ashore. Nothing significant. These are 10 minute showers and then up to the north. The more important thing is the weather has finally shifted and we're looking at the big Pacific storms that are going to start rolling across the Rockies and eventually getting to our area. We'll take a good look at all that coming up in just a moment. Back to you, Shana. All right, thanks, Mac. Well, firefighters are making progress on a major wildfire at the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge in southwestern Oklahoma. Around 150 personnel from 20 agencies are working around the clock to contain the blaze, which started last Thursday. As of this morning, the fire has burned 12,500 acres and is 48% contained. Today's weather with a red flag warning in place could challenge those containment lines. Winds are expected to reach 20 to 30 miles per hour with gusts up to 45 miles per hour alongside high temperatures and low humidity, making for intense fire conditions. Some good news, the bison on the refuge are safe and are expected to be fine. A wrong way crash in Texas leaves five people dead. Fort Worth police say a car driving the wrong way on 820 crashed head on with a truck, sparking a deadly fire. Inside the wrong way car, a family of four didn't survive. A woman in the truck also died while her fiance survived with injuries. Police say wrong way crashes have become all too common with officers feeling the impact personally after losing a sergeant to a similar incident in August. Drivers are urged to stay alert, use high beams and pull over if they see a wrong way vehicle. With Election Day next Tuesday, voters in our area are keeping an eye on several key races. 25 News Now reporter Trenton Whiting joins us with a breakdown. Trenton. 
Thank you, Shauna. Obviously, the presidential election between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump is getting a lot of voters to the polls. Presidential races usually bring more voters out, but this election has truly piqued public interest. We're going to take another look at a different hot race, the Senate race between Republican incumbent Ted Cruz and Democrat Colin Allred. Both candidates have experience on Capitol Hill. We've also got several important elections close to home, too. The U.S. House of Representatives, District 27, between Republican incumbent Michael Cloud and Democrat Tanya Lloyd. Also, former Republican Jackson County Sheriff A.J. Lauterbach and Democrat Stephanie Bassham face off in District 30. Several school districts in our area have voter approval tax rate elections, and there's one bond election. The Industrial ISD, the Yoakum ISD, and the Victoria ISD all have VATRE elections. The Hallettsville ISD has a bond election for new athletic facilities. Two more items on the ballot this year include the District 43 state representative race with Republican J.M. Lozano facing Democrat Mariana Casadas and the District 17 state Senate race with Republican state Senator incumbent Joan Huffman against Democrat Kathy Chang. We'll follow all of these races and more next Tuesday. Shauna, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Trenton. Well, the polls are open for early voting this week in Victoria County from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Voting is at the Dr. Patty Dodson Public Health Center at 2805 North Navarro, Classroom A. Early voting goes through this Friday, November 1st. This year's turnout is breaking the record for a single day during early voting. It happened three times in a row. The record now stands at Thursday's total of more than 2,100 voters. A Texas voter is facing charges after assaulting a polling worker in San Antonio. The incident at the Johnston Branch Library polling, polling site began Thursday night with a man being asked to remove a hat supporting a particular political candidate while in line at the polling site. The man initially complied and proceeded to vote, but on his way out of the building, he put the hat back on and began to assault the worker. Since the instance from last night, uh, wearing clothing supporting a political candidate, which that's electioneering. Uh, and it's certainly something that you're not supposed to do. Uh, it's, it's pretty clear in the literature that we give out to our deputies at, in, in enforcing the, the rules at, at polling sites. And it's, it's common knowledge that, that's put out. Uh, we, have, we have one document here by the Texas Secretary of State, uh, another one from the Bear County Elections. And in both, it, it lays out that electioneering is, is strictly prohibited. Well, last night we had an instance where uh, it got ugly. Now, thankfully, uh, nobody, there was nothing non, there was nothing life threatening about what occurred, but it was still an ugly incident that I can't think of anything uh, like this happening during my time here as sheriff, and I certainly hope to never see it again. The poll worker was treated on scene for minor injuries. The suspect, Jesse Lutzenberger, was later arrested and is now facing a felony charge for assault on an elderly person. Police say fires set at ballot boxes in Oregon and Washington are connected and they have identified a suspect vehicle. The fires were set in the early morning hours, apparently destroying hundreds of ballots. ABC's Alex Stone has more. We do have smoke coming out of the ballot box. Smoke billowing out of a ballot drop box in Vancouver, Washington this morning. Firefighters pulling piles of paper ballots out of the box. Authorities believe there were hundreds of ballots inside. Only a few could be saved. I'm going to need police on this. It looks like there's some kind of uh, a device attached to the ballot box. We don't know if it's an explosive or not. Just 10 miles away, but across state lines, another fire inside of a ballot box in Portland, Oregon this morning. Investigators saying an incendiary device was tossed in, causing the fire, but a fire suppression system was able to put it out. The box in Vancouver also had a fire suppression system, but authorities say for some reason it did not work. The FBI is involved in the investigation. Acts like this are targeted and they're intentional, and uh, we're concerned about that intentional act trying to affect the election process. We're dedicated to stopping that kind of behavior, and we're working toward that today. Police say they've identified a suspect vehicle in connection to both incidents. Police also believe the fires today are connected to a third device found at a different ballot box in Vancouver earlier this month. There was enough evidence collected at all three scenes that lead us to believe that all three incidents are connected, and we cannot get into more detail.
Authorities are advising voters who dropped off their ballots at those locations in Portland and Vancouver to contact their local elections office. Alex Stone, ABC News, Los Angeles. And as Election Day nears, safety at polling locations is a growing concern for voters across the country. So our viewer poll today, we want to know if you're concerned about safety at polling locations, yes or no. Right now, 72% of you say that you are not concerned about safety, um, but continue to vote, continue to participate by going to crossroadstoday.com slash vote, and we'll have the latest results for you on 25 News Now at 6. Legal battles are ramping up around Election Day 2024. The Republican Party says it is involved in 130 cases to ensure election laws are followed, though critics argue it's an attempt to cast doubt on the process. Key issues include mail ballot rules, certification, and voter roll purges. Meanwhile, both presidential candidates are hitting the battleground states, Vice President Harris in Michigan and former President Trump in Georgia. Well, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell to receive alerts when new videos are posted. Well, stay with us straight ahead on 25 News Now at 5. Rising child care costs leave families seeking options for relief. Also ahead with rising cases of respiratory illnesses across the U.S., how to keep your child healthy this fall. of child care. The burden for families just got even more expensive. The question now is, will there be any relief? Here's ABC's Allison Kosick. This morning, a new study finds the typical American household with one infant is now spending about 15% of its total income on daycare. That amounts to spending an average of $14,070 per year per infant. ABC station KOMO in Seattle recently held a town hall on the issue. Most of the places were more than our mortgage, which seems kind of crazy. Having two kids go to daycare two days a week in Seattle, still the cost of it will be more than my take home pay. It's been a hot topic on the campaign trail. Former President Donald Trump. We're going to be taking in trillions of dollars and as much as child care uh, is talked about as being expensive, it's relatively speaking not very expensive compared to the kind of numbers we'll be taking in. Vice President Harris. My plan is that no family, no working family should pay more than 7% of their income in child care. Many child care centers say post COVID, they've struggled with staffing shortages and the expiration of federal funds and have been forced to pass higher costs onto families. Those costs, according to one survey, have prompted 45% of working mothers to consider leaving the workforce or reducing their work hours. Which has a direct impact then on our economy. You see the businesses, everyone has help wanted. The new study ranked states on daycare costs. The three least affordable states were New Mexico, Hawaii, and New York. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. 
Texas is clawing back more than $607 million per year in federal funding for special education services. A move local school district officials say will likely worsen already strained budgets for students with disabilities. To read the full Texas Tribune article, visit our website, crossroadstoday.com. The CDC reports that over 600,000 Americans will have their first stroke this year. New guidelines, the first update in a decade from the American Stroke Association, aim to lower that risk. Recommendations include regular exercise, a Mediterranean diet, and for high-risk individuals, weight loss and diabetes medications. Women should monitor blood pressure during pregnancy or birth control use. These guidelines were recently published in the journal Stroke. Well, pulmonary infections happen when a virus, bacteria, or fungus invade the lungs, causing inflammation. And the CDC says these illnesses and respiratory viruses are making more children sick this fall. Today's Health Minute has a look at the latest data and how to help slow the spread. In parts of the U.S., RSV is on the rise, especially in young children. Cases of pertussis are five times higher than they were at this time last year. And now an alert from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention about a surge in cases of walking pneumonia, particularly among preschool age children. This wave uh, began a little earlier and is, is much, much higher than what we expect uh, from previous years. Dr. Frank Esper with Cleveland Clinic Children says symptoms of this milder lung infection can last for weeks. It may include a cough, low fever, and muscle aches. It's typically caused by uh, several different types of bacteria, but the most common one is called mycoplasma. And this is an old friend with pediatricians and adult physicians alike. Esper says penicillin and amoxicillin, the antibiotics typically used to treat pneumonia, don't seem to work with walking pneumonia. So a different antibiotic regimen may be needed instead. That antibiotic most commonly is azithromycin, also known as a ZPAC uh, by uh, many people out in the community. And that actually does treat walking pneumonia very well. Esper says those who are sick can help slow the spread of any illness by covering coughs and sneezes, by washing hands, and by staying home if you're sick. Chicken soup yourself back up to good health and then go out afterwards. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, things have finally changed. We're going to get a little cloud cover and a few light showers around the area for the rest of the week. Right now, we're at 86. Uh, we managed to get up to a high of about, I think, yeah, we made it to 91 again. We're supposed to be around 80 degrees this time of year, not exactly what we've been doing normally. Uh, and the record is 95, so it's late in the season, but finally the frontal systems are beginning to move. We're going to be looking at some rain shower activity here in the crossroads later on. We'll be talking about that coming up in just a moment. Well, some folks along uh, the coastal areas down toward Calhoun County actually saw a little rain shower activity today. Look at that. All of it coming ashore. Very light, but it's a, something. We haven't seen this in how long? 
It has not rained for the entire month of October, so this is like a sight for sore eyes. Looks like Matagorda County is getting a little bit of activity as well. We look at the big picture. Nothing happening in North Texas yet. But we are excited because things are beginning to move in the northern Rockies. Let's take another look at this activity. There's Port O'Connor. They got some down there in Calhoun County. Let's zoom in a little bit and you can see Palacios there and all of that activity just lasted about 10 minutes and that was all we got. So it's uh, better than nothing. Uh, as Shauna was talking about, we are definitely in a drought. The uh, county, the entire county of Victoria is under moderate drought conditions as is most of the crossroads. You can see more extreme drought up here, which would be the Colorado River Valley. And then out in the hill country, basically San Antonio West is in uh, extreme drought as well. So yeah, we need the rain. Uh, this uh, stuff that we're talking about this week is not going to be a rain, uh, a drought buster, but it will help. It'll make things look a little bit better, uh, but it's not, uh, we're not looking at very heavy rain over the next few days. 88 is our forecast high for tomorrow. We're still on the warm side of things, and I'm not saying that a cold front is going to blow through here, but it's going to get close, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Right now, as we talked last week, uh, this area just below uh, Cuba um, has a potential for a something development. Okay, 40% chance that a tropical system will develop, but now the good news for us, and especially for Florida, is that the uh, upper winds would then take it to the northeast. And so it would go over Cuba, possibly the Dominican Republic, if it forms as a tropical storm. And even if it doesn't, it will be a large area of unsettled weather. But uh, for Florida, it's not a hurricane. Uh, and for uh, um, our areas, obviously, it's too far away to help us at all. We, uh, of course, take a look at the upper winds this time of year. When you see this big, deep trough like this digging out from the west, that's good because all this area in green is lots of moisture. And as we go through Wednesday and then on into Thursday, you can see how that first one sort of misses us. Now we're here. Let's look at the next one. This is we're talking um, how far out we're talking not by the weekend. Oh yeah. Well, this is a good shot right here. When you see this orange and yellow, it means that there's strong upward lift. In other words, we take a little bitty cloud and make it a big tall cloud and we may get some sort of activity in our area. Now the first two fronts, they're just sort of going to, they're glancing blows. Okay. Not, not a, not a strong, big cold front just yet, but I'm just excited that they're beginning to move. Okay. Partly cloudy for tomorrow. We're looking at a pretty good looking day. 85 the high, 20% chance of a sprinkle or two. Pretty much the same deal in Cuero. As you can see over the next few days, we have spotty showers possible. And yes, it is on Halloween, a 40% chance. Don't get worried. It'll just be light rain and I don't think it'll be all day. And once the sun goes down, that will diminish and then we'll continue with a slight chance of some shower activity as we head on into the weekend. That's your seven day forecast reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that, but crossroads today on your phone. Shauna, back to you. All right, coming up next on 25 News Now at 5, we'll take a look at stocks. Plus one of Mc McDonald's iconic staples returns to the menu.
Taking a look at stocks, the Dow closed up 273 points, the S&P 500 is up 15 points, and the Nasdaq is up 49 points. Oil is down $3.82 to $67.95 per barrel. Trump uh, stock in Trump's social media company is surging as traders bet on his election success. Wall Street now values Trump media at $9 billion, tripling in just weeks. The stock thrives on hype and momentum tied closely to Trump's political future. Since September 23rd, Trump media shares have spiked more than 200 percent. Market experts say the rally is driven by bets that Trump could win the White House, positioning his platform, Truth Social, for potential presidential use. Well, McDonald's fans get good news after a bad week for the company. McDonald's is bringing back the quarter pounder nationwide after a temporary pause linked to an E. coli outbreak. Tests run by the Colorado Department of Agriculture found no E. coli in beef patties from the affected locations. McDonald's now suspects onions from Taylor Farms may have been the issue, not the burgers themselves. For now, restaurants that received these onions will serve the quarter pounder without them. The FDA has not officially ruled out the patties as a source yet, but the investigation is ongoing. Well, the saga of McDonald's broken ice cream machines might finally end thanks to a new court ruling. For years, McDonald's couldn't repair the machines on its own because the manufacturer held the exclusive repair rights. But starting today, restaurants can finally fix those machines themselves. This new rule overrides the digital locks that kept the machines off limits and fans everywhere are hoping that this means fewer machine down messages in the future. The broken McFlurry machine has become such a legend that there's even a fan made website McBroken to track it all. So here's to more ice cream and fewer breakdowns. More high earnings households are living paycheck to paycheck. The Bank of America released a report that says about one fifth of U.S. households that earn more than $150,000 a year are in that situation. The bank says inflation, pricey mortgages and big utility bills are stretching family budgets thin, even for higher earners. The analysis says some households might find relief as inflation rates drop and kids age out of child care. Well, stay with us when we come back. We'll take one last look at your forecast for the week. Plus, just in time for Halloween, today's the perfect excuse to indulge because it's National Chocolate Day. And here's a look at what's coming up on World News Tonight right after 25 News Now at 5. News involving Donald Trump, Kamala Harris after what was said at Madison Square Garden and where this race stands one week out. Also, fire set to ballots in three locations. An 80-degree Halloween and who was in the audience for Adele and had her in tears. You'll see it next. Well, just in time for Halloween, today is National Chocolate Day. It's the perfect excuse to celebrate one of the world's favorite flavors. Chocolate starts as fermented and roasted cacao seeds, originally found in Mexico and Central and South America. 
whether you're into the dark, milk, white, even unsweetened, if that's your thing, <laughs> chocolate has a version pretty much for anyone. You can eat it, drink it, you can even bake with it. So go ahead, treat yourself to your favorite chocolatey indulgence today. And very easy to find some oh. chocolate with all of the Halloween candy out in the stores. Everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. So you're telling me that the Aztecs basically were eating Snicker bars uh, 500 years ago. because. Pretty much, They yeah. started with that. <laughs> yeah, maybe not all the other little ingredients all in there, but you know. <laughs> well, it's that time of year where you see uh, Snicker bars pretty much wherever, and you know, we all have to get ready for the big onslaught of the little goblins. Mm -hmm. Well, things are looking like we will get some shower activity over the next couple of days, but I don't want you to get worried or scared or, you know, it's going to ruin anything because it's very light rain and it'll be in the afternoon hours and then it will disagree, uh, disappear by evening hours. So we're looking for uh, increasing uh, sprinkles, I'm gonna call it, uh, f through Wednesday all the way through the weekend. It's, it's a far, sh shall we say, it's a frightful sight because we haven't seen rain since last month. So this is a good 30 days that uh, we need to catch up. Uh, I'm sorry that it's on for the holiday there, but uh, at least uh, we think that we will not get any severe weather just a few little light showers around the area, widely scattered on Thursday and Friday and Saturday. All right, so go ahead and keep whatever plans you have in place for I Halloween. I think so, yes, okay. absolutely. You know, what worries me is the, the school fairs and the garden variety neighborhood stuff. I think you'll be fine. Yeah, okay. okay. All right, sounds good. Well, thanks for joining us. Be sure to join us back here for 25 News Now at 6. World News is next.